Man, got around. OG7 back here. And today, there are no tales of victory or glory, but only deceit and people hiding in the darkness and the shadows. Because that's how snakes attack you in the dark. Hey guys, I'm going to get straight into this video, man, because uh, as Crazy Story says, it's gotten real, man. Like, they reached out and touched me in ways that I've never been touched before, man. And I'm done, man. I am done. And I know he's going to be laughing. And uh, just for this video, guys, I'm not going to, I'm going to try very hard not to use profanity or lose my voice because um, I don't want to be like Crazy Stories, man. He, he has this Napoleon complex where he feels that if he talks loud, he talks tough and he cusses a lot. Like when he called me on my phone and, uh, you know, he just was calling, cussing, calling me on my name, yelling. And all I said to him was, hey, my man, if you want to have a conversation, you're just a bench warmer and you are a cow, or you're a cow pie and you're full of sheep dung and I will wreck you. And I was like, can I get a word in? Because the conversation is normally a two way street. And this dude just kept yelling in my ear. And just so you guys know, um, I have some psychological issues. So when a person yells at me, dude, it, it just triggers me to meet that level of aggression but i'm gonna work really hard as you can see dude i got bags under my eyes i couldn't sleep man because um i uh i watched i i uh, i had uh subscribed to uh crazy stories um channel and i did a play on i just watched all of the defamation of character and the things that he's saying and he is right man this youtube thing is real he's reached out and touched me i am done and um, I'm going to be uh, leaving the, the, the YouTube community. and But before I do that, I want to share with you the title of this video. So the title of this video is this, guys. If a gangster or a gangbanger witnesses a crime against a civilian that they don't know, should they contact the police or the authorities or governing bodies? So I wanna, without further ado, I want to get straight into this, man. Um what I'm going to do, guys, I got some stories that I'm going to share with you guys. Three stories I'm going to share with you. And they're like Aesop's fables, guys. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you three stories that will demonstrate the difference between criminal behavior, concerned citizen behavior, and police informant behavior. And then I'm going to let you guys make up your own decisions. Because, man, when I was watching uh, crazy stories videos, I watched... I'm not going to say all of them on his channel, but I think I watched a good one third. And, uh, when, and on the videos where he's talking about me and Big Herc, and all he does is yell a lot. And he calls us out of our name and he makes all of these accusations and things, which maybe some of them are true. That's not what this video is about. But I want to share with you the difference. There's a difference between criminal behavior, uh, concerned citizen behavior, and police informant behavior. And I got this actually from... His homeboy, Nate Dog 916 who says, he said this on the video. Concerned citizens and civilians should work with the police. But criminals and gangsters and gang members should not. There's a cardinal rule in prison. So let me tell you about these stories, man. But first, I want to ask four very qualified men to serve as street judges over the proceedings. I asked that C.T. Fletcher... Midwest Kong, Cali Muscle, and Big Herc 916 listen to all the evidence that I'm going to provide in this video. And before I get started, I understand, you know, I've talked to Cali Muscle, I've talked to Big Herc, I've talked to C.T. Fletcher, I've talked to um, um, West Coast Kong. And dude, they're not they they don't they're not with this narrative, dude. They got they're too busy living their life. They don't even watch my videos, bro. Like, these dudes are handling their own business, but the reason I bring them into it, man, is because they're qualified to look at this objectively. Like, they're not in the fray. When you start talking to Nate Dog 916, Dirty 916, and this lady, Life Without Parole, who have who have teamed up with Crazy Stories, and they got a, dude, they got a large follower of troll armies, dude, way larger than mine. I feel like... Um, I feel like the Germans in, in World War II, and this is why, just so you guys know, I'm a military historian, statistician, I study war, and I study strategies. And I just want to be forthright with you guys. If the Germans had not attacked the Americans, 
the English and the Russians all at the same time, they would have won. They had superior armies. They had superior equipment. They had superior training. Like Germans are awesome guys. Even to this day, man, they're, they're, they're really advanced. But what they did is they overextended themselves. And I have overextended myself messing with people like crazy stories, man. Nate Dog 916, Dirty 916, and then uh, Life Without Parole, dude. They've ganged up on me. I'm, you know, that's why I always tell you I stand up to gang members individually because, dude, with, with numbers comes power. And this is not a movie. I'm only one man. So in real life, I think I can, I, I think I can realistically take out maybe two two guys the third guy is going to give it to me but the first two guys i feel very confident I'll, I'll give it to them but i mean it's the reality the third guy is going to get me so then you know you got nate dog 916 dirty 916 and then um life without parole ganging up with crazy stories there's no way i'm gonna win so that's why i'm asking ct fletcher midwest kong cali muscle and big herc 916 to to uh please stop what you're doing and listen to all the evidence, even though you guys have told me repeatedly, do you don't listen to my videos, you don't watch my videos, you got better things to do. But this is very, this is very important, guys, because it's going to determine the, it's going to determine the the path of this prison uh, YouTube channel genre. Because, dude, I'm going to be gone like crazy stories and Nate Talk nine one six and uh, Dirty nine one six and uh, Life Without Parole. <laughs> Dude, they 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 making sure I'm gonna get incarcerated, like like it, for real for real incarcerated in federal prison. I've never been to federal prison, but they're making sure of that. So let me get into this, guys. So, C. T. Fletcher and West Coast Kong's qualifications is they are both square dudes who are not to be frick with, as they grew up in the front lines of the battlefields of their hoods, but chose not to get caught up in the madness. And this is very important to understand, guys, because even though they understand the criminal activity and they understand guys going to the penitentiary and all that, and they're but they're by no means buses or chumps. I mean, they're they're warriors, they're beasts, but they chose to stay on, let's say, the right side of the law. So they look at things differently than I may look at it. Um, Nate Dog nine one six, Dirty nine one six, Life Without Parole, and of course the king, the the, the general of the troll army, the haters crazy stories. So that's why I'm bringing them into the fray. And I ask that you people that know these guys, C.T. Fletcher, West Coast Kong, Cali Muscle, and Big Hurt, can you ask them to just look at the video? Because what they're going to tell you is, nah, man, I don't want to look at it. But it's very important because this is going to change the whole genre of this prison snitching um, genre that's on YouTube. So anyway, I bring in Cali Muscle and Big Herc's qualifications are they single-handedly launched this craziness now called the Prison YouTube Snitching Society. If it wasn't for Cali Muscle and Big Herc, if you guys don't study history, bro, man, Cali Muscle and Big Herc launched this thing. Cali Muscle is the reason I first got on YouTube because I got out of prison. I was in prison with Cali Muscle. He didn't know me because he, you know, he's he was a shot caller. I was just a buster. But everybody heard stories of Cali Muscle in prison. Like Cali Muscle already knew when he got out of prison, he was going to do was just, he's very focused. He knew he was going to get paid. So he got out of prison. He was doing these uh, muscle ups and, 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 and uh, pole, human flagpole stuff and all this. Launched this YouTube. So then when I get out, I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty buff and shaped dude. I'm going to try that too. And then it just, it just didn't take off, you know, because Cali Muscle's got a certain personality. And then I met Big Herc, man. I saw Cali Muscle on Big Herc's um, uh, Fresh Out. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's the secret. So I went on Fresh Out, got launched, you know what I mean? But um, what I'm trying to say is without Cali Muscle and Big Herc, there would be no prison genre, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to go into these other prison genre YouTubers that have a large following, but I'm just letting you know without these two guys. So that's why I'm bringing them in. So here's the first story. You live in an impoverished neighborhood and where the notorious Bloods gang has moved in. You are hearing a rash of stories where a blood gang member on crystal meth is doing home invasions on elderly people, beating them and taking their pension check money on the first of every month. 
But here's the caveat. You don't know them. You don't know these people as they are not related to you. Then you're just hearing these stories, man. You're hearing a lot of them, like, you know, and the elderly people can't call the police because the elderly people are afraid for their lives. Like in America, I've noticed the propensity for children once they grow up and move away. They don't look after their parents. They don't check in on their parents. They don't care about their parents because, you know, it's just the way Americans are. So these elderly people are afraid to call the police because the notorious blood time. Hey, you call the cops. I will execute you. The elderly people are just afraid. They just give them their pension check every month, right? So I want to ask you guys, do you, A, look the other way and mind your own business as you don't know them and they are not related to you in any way, any way? They're, they're what's called victims in the hood. They're just what's called victims. Or do you be, you, you you're, do you be, do you go on a neighborhood watch campaign, rally up all the Bloods gang members, and ask them to catch the drug addict Blood and make him stop? Or do you see, start patrolling the neighborhood, so when you see the drug addicted Blood breaking into a house and trying and, and, and tying up and beating the elderly people you don't know, you whip out your handy dandy zoom camera from the hidden darkness of your car and videotape the entire deal, making sure to get a good shot of the drug addict blood's face on camera and then turn the footage over to the local authorities. And I'm not going to debate that with you guys right now because I got a second story, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. Here's the second story. You own a business in an impoverished neighborhood. And you hear stories of the notorious Crips gangs walking into businesses and shaking down the owners for protection money. You don't know any of the business owners as they are not related to you as they are foreigners and don't speak English that well as they are illegal immigrants. And because of your reputation in the, in the hood and the street and YouTube, they don't bother you. So one day as you pull up to your business, you see the notorious Crips in the business next to yours, pistol whipping the, fizz, the foreign business owner as he hands the notorious Crips money from his open safe for extortion. So do you, A, look the other way and mind your own business as you don't know them and they are not related to you in any way whatsoever? Or do you, B, rally up all the Crips in your neighborhood to have a meeting to ask them to stop extor the extortion madness in your neighborhood on these poor illegal aliens that you don't even know that aren't related to you. Or C, while you're in your car, do you pull out your phone from the safety of your car, activate the zoom function and record the entire crime, making sure to get the faces of the Crips gang members and then call the authorities and ask for an email address to send the video information to incriminating the Crips. I'm not going to debate that either because I got the third story for you guys. Here's the third and last story, guys. You just get out of prison after serving 10 hard years for a hostile takeover bank robbery that involved the shootout with the cops and taking of hostages that gave you two violent felony charges. Like, you're no joke, my man. You hear about this YouTube prison community filled with soft, lying, wannabe gangsters selling wolf tickets, right? You're like, oh, man, these dudes is fake busters. I can get on here and make money because I'm real, you know what I mean? So you decide to miss all the drama and concentrate on selling workout plans, supplements, and merchandise. But no matter how hard you work putting out video after video with what you think is very good content, your subscriber base is not growing, and your, your supplements and merchandise sales are not selling. So you go, man, what the heck? These dudes are soft, weak, they're phony, they're fake. I'm a real OG. I'm a real gangster. And I got real stories. These dudes is lying and telling stories. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm exposed to truth, right? So then you, so you start researching and investigating the prison YouTubers with the most subscribers and supplement merchandise sales. You find that the number one prison YouTuber has his merchandise manufactured in California using underage illegal alien children smuggled over the border here to keep his production costs low and to keep his production costs low and you have proof like dude you ain't you dude you you know people that know people like crazy stories dude you can you can reach out and touch people you got evidence you got verified evidence of what this dude's doing right so do you a 
mind your own business because it's got nothing to do with you. I mean, it's just they've been doing illegal alien trafficking for, dude, for decades now. It's a big business. But you're not related to any of them because you're a mulatto, right? Or do you be? Contact other prison YouTubers and gossip and throw salt on the fellow convict. You know what I mean? You guys just call each other and you say, yeah, man, this dude's doing this illegal alien stuff. That's why his merchandise is really low. And then we, we can't compete with him because his, his merchandise, his overhead is low. And he, he can therefore cut us out because he's selling his for lower. Man, we can't compete against that, man. This dude's a shiesty dude. He's got shiesty behavior. Or do you see? Take the evidence you have and turn it over to the federal authorities as child labor laws are illegal in this country. So let me just say this to you guys in parting. Do people lie, tell stories, and embellish events on YouTube to gain followers? It's a rhetorical question. And the answer is sure. But is it right? Well, that all depends on your um, intentions behind the stories. So let me share something with you guys. This is like Aesop's fable, man. These are like myths, right? Urban legends. So if it is to show right from wrong, square from criminal, good from bad, you know, choices, what's the harm, right? That's debatable, right? You can say, well, you should never lie under any circumstance. Nobody should ever lie. Nobody else on, on YouTube lies except OG Silverback. OG Silverback's the best liar on YouTube, nobody, no nah, man, uh, Crazy Stories has never lied about anything, you know, Nate Dog 916, Dirty 916, um, Life Without Parole, they've never lied about anything in their life, they're just righteous people, right, that's why they got criminal backgrounds, right, but what do you call it when a group of four convicts, criminals, and gangsters designate themselves as a YouTube prison channel police to regulate what can and can't be said, dude? Isn't that called censorship, man? Isn't that something that the government does, man? Isn't that something that governed bodies do to control what you can and cannot say to control your free speech, right? See, but I got it. I want to ask you this, though. Who has given them the authority or the right to do so? I want to ask you guys that because you guys are always like, ALG Silverback, where's your paperwork? Where's this? Where's that? Well, I want to ask you guys. Where is their paperwork designating them as the conveyors of truth and right on the YouTube prison channels, right? Because it was interesting, dude, like, you know, they people always say this, man. I just want to, I just want to say this before I wrap this up. I always hear, and there's numerous prison channels, you know, even Dirty916 has done it, a couple of others, you know, they call Wes Watson out on what they say is his BS, man, right? And so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Cali Muscle, man, and Big Hurt. I'm like, dude, don't worry about what somebody else is. That's your problem. You need to worry about yourself. See, people on YouTube are so busy trying to figure out how to get likes and subscribe. And this is what it's called, guys. It's called the crab in the barrel mentality. So what that means, guys, is that if the only way you can elevate yourself is to put somebody else down, then that is your strength, dude. Because they got this book called First Discover Your Strength. And you got to look at what your strengths are. And if your only strength you have is to put somebody else down to make you feel good, you know, to take somebody else out to eliminate the competition. I'm going to leave that up to the jury here. So what I call this type of behavior, I call it nosy, snoopy, gossiping into other people's business. I call it police investigation work. But then when they find evidence that can get you arrested, prosecuted, incarcerated, I call that police cooperation snitching. See, it's one thing to call your homeboys in Sacramento and be, and then they'd be like, yeah, man, you know, dude be doing some rapey stuff around women, you know what I'm saying? Like, he'd just be saying inappropriate things, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'll, I'll roll like that, you know, even though I pistol whip people, man, you know what I'm saying? I help people hostage and all that, but yeah, that dude, you know what I mean? It's one thing, that's gossip. But it's a whole nother thing to collect up information and say, hey, dog, send me that interview where he was saying he was Special Forces Black Ops, send me that, and then you forward it to this retired Master Sergeant military police dude, right? Dude, he's an official, he's an official authority, right? And so I'm just saying, dude, that to me, and I can't speak for Cali Muscle and, and Big Herc, man, but you working with the police, man, you know? So I ask, what is the verdict of the four very qualified judges of C.T. Fletcher, Midwest Kong, 
Cali Muscle, and Big Herc 916. And let me say this in parting. Whatever your verdict is, all I know is that the people who have watched this video are now jury members. And no matter what the jury decides, I have decided to leave the prison YouTube snitching society because if the other prison YouTubers want fame, notoriety, subscribers, and validations through likes that badly, that Nate Dog 916, Dirty 916, and Life Without Parole will team up with Crazy Stories, who is working with the retired Master Sergeant Military Police, who, who um, is part of the federal government, dude, to turn over video footage, testimonies, and collaborating stories to the federal government. And here's the kicker, guys. To have me arrested, convicted, and sent to federal prison for 10 years, a minimum of 10 years, for stolen valor, after destroying my lucrative information technology career, just so they can feel better about themselves, <laughs> man, they can have this YouTube stuff, man. If the people who can see the difference between snitching to the police and minding your own business want to support me through this ordeal, then I like the video. I like I, then like the video, subscribe to my channel and share it, and then unsubscribe from their channels to show that you will not support fake gangsters, fake gang members, and snitches who look up to 69 and think it's okay to snitch on someone just because they catch them in a lie, bro. And see, this is the whole thing you guys got to understand, dude. I'm not saying it's right to lie. I'm not. You know what I mean? A lot of people lie, man. That's not what I'm saying. It's not right to embellish stories or whatever. A lot of people do it. But here's the difference, man. Either you're a criminal and a gangster dude or you're a square dude, man. And as Nate Dog 916 says, square citizens, man, it is their duty to work with the police. But who says that it's the duty of criminals and gangsters and gang members, right, to willingly work with federal authorities to, to have me <laughs> incarcerated? I wait for the jury's verdict. And until next time, OG Silverback out.